Hey, if you're a beginner drummer who's starting to gig with a band for the first time, or you're just starting out and you're not playing with anybody yet, but you would love to do it one day and you know that you want to have fun doing it and you want to sound awesome playing with a band, then today's lesson is for you. And also, if you feel like you lack confidence and are honestly, if you're willing to admit it, scared out of your mind at the thought of playing with people in front of an audience, then you should definitely hang out with me today for this discussion because you'll totally relate to my story <laughs> from my first gig. You see, one of your struggles as a beginner is that you don't know what you don't know. I've been there, every one of us was there at some point. And sometimes you just have to figure out a lot of stuff by trial and error. But my goal today, what if you could know the three biggest, most helpful strategies for getting rid of stage fright, building confidence, and actually feeling ready to be the commanding drummer you know you can be? Well, you can, and we're gonna break down some simple tips for you today so that you're empowered to go have fun making music with confidence and most importantly, having fun. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out. I help self-taught beginner drummers know what to practice so that they can nail songs and ultimately sound awesome with a band and be that drummer other people want to jam with and I wanna help you get there. But hey, there's a big problem that stands in the way of 99% of drummers, based on my experience, really I think it's 100% if we're all honest, and that is a weak hand. Everybody deals with a weak hand at some point. It's keeping your singles from being even, it gets stiff as you play faster, you want to move your weak hand around the kit, but it kind of just lives on the snare. You can't keep time with it, and there's all these limitations that will hold you back in your playing. But the truth is, having a weak hand is natural, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can fix it, you just need to know how. And I want to help you do it. So I've designed a test, a test that you can go through. This is like your weak hand diagnostics test. The do I have a weak hand test, the how weak is my weak hand test. And what you do is you go through and you address some of these questions, playing, you know, you follow the steps, playing the thing, and for as long as you're answering yes, okay, awesome, move on to the next question. And then if you stumble on something and no, okay, this needs work, it pinpoints for you what that weak hand issue is because all of our weak hands out there are different. Not everybody's weak hand is the same. Not everybody has the same struggle. And so we can't treat everybody the same here with a generic dump of information to solve your weak hand. I wanna give you the specific information you need. And so as you're going through it, it links to different lessons and we've got all these tips for solving that weak hand. That's gonna save you a whole bunch of time. That way you solve your weak hand faster so that you can play fluid singles and smooth fills around the kit and be confident because both hands are capable. That's what I want for you, I hope you do too. So be sure to take the test, it's in the description below, totally free. Okay, let's dive in today. So I will never forget how terrified I was the very first gig I ever played, the very first time I played with people. So I started taking drum lessons the summer that I turned 16, so I was going on 16, and within about three months of lessons, I get a call from, from somebody at, at my church who's trying to recruit a new drummer for the high school student worship band. So we did student-led worship where high school kids would lead the whole youth group in songs every Sunday. So we had a little band, really cool setup. And they needed a new drummer at the time. And somebody found out that I had been taking lessons for like two months, three months. And so they were like, hey, maybe Steven can come and play. They were desperate. And so they were willing to give me a chance. But I remember that being so terrifying to me. And it was so out of my comfort zone. I remember showing up the first Sunday morning and I got there early and I was like, do I go on the stage and sit behind the kit? What do I do? Like, it, it didn't feel natural to me. So I remember sitting there on the front row, like waiting for somebody else to get there and kind of waiting to be told what to do. I remember it came time to play the first song and I didn't know, okay, do I count off with the sticks or do I count off on the hi-hat? Like, how do you do a count off? I remember constantly dragging. I couldn't keep the energy up and I probably looked like a deer in the headlights. I was so scared and I was just afraid of train wrecking the band, but I couldn't keep the tempo up because I just kept dragging back because I wasn't staying on top of it. The whole thing, just looking back, it's like, man, I was so scared and was so bad at it. But here we are years later. I survived. I had so many drumming fails, like total drumming fails happen in those first three months of gigging. But I learned a ton. And so now, 15 years later, I've played thousands of gigs and uh, I've learned a lot by making mistakes. But I want to help spare you some of these mistakes and give you a lot more know-how than I had at the time so that you can more quickly be that confident drummer that people want to have in their band. It took me a long time to get there. I think you can get there faster than I did. Here's what it boils down to today. If you know the right way to prepare for the gig, the right things to listen for and pay attention to during the gig, and you have the right mindset going forward, you will succeed and grow like crazy. 
So we're talking about what to do before the gig, what to do during, and then what to do after, whether or not you have any more gigs on the calendar. And this totally applies to you even if you haven't booked any gigs yet. Even if you've never played with people but you want to, this is all going to be very important. So go ahead and be you know, filing this away, letting it marinate in your head, and uh, it's going to help you out. So here we go. Five tips for your first gig. Five tips for, you know, if you're a beginner with plans of, uh, of playing a gig, this is going to help you out. Number one, prepare well. And what we mean by this is listen to the songs over and over again, aiming to know them better than anybody else in the band. And specifically what we want to do in doing this. So fundamentally, we had a lesson about this recently, about listening to a song over and over again. Whatever that song is you need to learn, you have to get the melody in your head. Because the two big things you need to be listening for when you're learning music are the melody and the drum part, specifically the kick drum pattern, which is kind of the kick snare part. You know, we're not just paying attention to kick pattern, it's kick and snare and how they relate. And so we're listening for that, but first we're paying attention to melody because the kick and snare patterns, the this groove as we traditionally would call it, always relates to that melody. So if you can get the melody in your head, get the song stuck in your head so it's driving you crazy so that you can sing it all back, that's gonna help you feel a lot more comfortable and confident when it comes time to play it. Because how do we feel like we know a song? We feel like we know it and have it internalized when we can sing it in our head. And if we're gonna sing it in our head, we've gotta know the melody really well. So the goal is to learn it better than the singers. I always like to say that, not as an arrogant ego thing for us drummers, but let's see if we can know how the vocal part goes better than the singer can. Doesn't mean we need to be able to sing it, it just means be able to play it in your head. Uh, I can't I can't sing well at all. I can match pitches, but I can't sing well. But as long as I can hear that singer singing well, that's all that matters, and you can do that too. So listen over and over again, and pay attention to the drum parts. Now, as a beginner, I know this seems daunting because you feel like you just, it's new. It, it, it's kind of like, I feel like I can relate to this by watching football, and you know, somebody sitting next to me is like identifying all the intricacies of this play that's happening. I'm just like, I just see a bunch of guys running at each other, and somebody runs that way, and they throw the ball, and they score a touchdown. So I don't see all of the thought and intricacy that went into planning the play. Why is that? Because I haven't sat there and watched it closely enough times and had somebody telling me what's going on to be able to figure that out on my own yet. So I can relate to how it feels as a beginner, because I was there too, when you're learning songs and you're listening and you're just like, what do I listen for? So just know, start out, it's, starting out, it's just those simple things. Be listening to the melody and the vocal part. How does a song go? Just get it in your head so you always know what's next. Pay attention to the kick and snare, and as you listen over and over again, and the more you play your drums, the easier this gets, and it'll become a more familiar second nature process to go through. Now, there's a lot that can go into gig preparation. We've got other stuff here on the channel about it, but this is just a really good generic tip. Before you play your first gig, that's the biggest things to pay attention to. Tip number two, so this is a during the gig thing, focus on time and feel. I know that's easy to say, harder to do. It took me a few months of playing every Sunday at my church to get to where I was starting to pay attention to time and feel. Uh, I mean, I was trying to pay attention to time that first Sunday, but like I said, I kept dragging. I couldn't keep the energy up, and so I had to get comfortable enough just being in that environment of playing with people to finally get to where I could start thinking about what is my time? Like, am I slowing down? Am I speeding up? How does this feel? Am I keeping the energy up? How loud am I? You know, those are things that uh, are hard to do the very first time you play with people, but you've got to challenge yourself to start doing it because that's going to help you so much. Listen to the lead vocal and listen to yourself. You know, the, the two biggest things, a lot of times, um, a lot of people will say, maybe, maybe a better way to put this, is an often overrated relationship in a band from the drummer's perspective is drums and bass. There seems to be a lot of overemphasis on that, you know, like locking with the bass player and playing off the bass player and all of that. That is a, a great relationship, but for you as the drummer, the thing you need to be paying more attention to than the bass player is the lead singer. Because the lead singer and the melody of the song, that's the most important part of the song. That's what the audience hears, and that's what's informing the parts that you play. And that's why when you listen to music, you got to listen to that melody and listen how the drum parts fit with the melody. We could talk about this all day, the intricacies and you know nerdy details of this, but you'll start to notice things the more you listen to music, like, oh, that kick drum pattern matched the vocal. Oh, they played that fill because the vocal stopped singing right there. So there was a hole left by the vocal, so we played a fill and then the vocal came back in. And so those are the things we wanna pay attention to. So as you're playing in real time, as you're playing with people, you're listening to that melody, you're hearing what the singer's doing, you're watching them, and you're listening to yourself. Learn to do that, even if that's, you know, that's it. 
Learn to do that because in doing that, you are paying attention to your time and your feel. And you're making sure you're not too loud. You're making sure you're, you know, you're playing nice and steady. And of course, this is not a simple, easy thing to just do perfectly your first gig, but it comes with time. These are things to be thinking about going forward every time you play, especially in rehearsals where it's less pressure. You know, when you're just rehearsing and you're just playing and you're confident in the song, you know the song well, you can kind of just sit back and relax and listen. And um, remember that less is more. Don't play too many notes. That's all we'll say about that. <laughs> don't play too many notes. Keep it nice and simple. Know that you don't have to play a lot of notes. It's more important than it feels good. But also be in the present moment and try to have fun. This was a big mistake that I made early on where I just wasn't in the present moment. I came from a background of playing piano as a kid where I would play these recitals and concerts and go to piano competitions. And it was always just kind of survival mode. As soon as I started playing in front of somebody, it was like, all right, let me just get through this piece and try to not mess up. If I mess up, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just hope I don't mess up. Let's just get through this. Okay, done. I can finally breathe. And I like held my breath the entire five minutes of the piece. And when I got into drums, I think I carried a lot of that with me and couldn't figure out like, how do I actually enjoy this instead of being so uptight and worried and stressed about messing up? And that came with time. It definitely came with time of learning to be present in the moment and just listening to the music. And I do remember the second Sunday that I played at my church. So I played that first Sunday, and I remember the second Sunday, there being a moment, I was kind of looking around as I was playing, and I was like, you know what? This is really fun. Like, yes, I'm still terrified. Yes, this is not at all my comfort zone, and I'm nowhere close to being comfortable. This is really cool that I'm getting to do this. And so at a minimum, that's what you've got to know. That's what you have to realize, like, this is the coolest thing. So many people want to play in a band and like play drums with a band. This is so cool. I'm thankful that I'm getting to do this right now, even if I'm not good at it yet. And so enjoy that present moment and begin to listen and have fun and just be cognizant of what all's going on around you so that it's not just survival mode. Quickly get you know from the survive into the thrive and you're gonna have way more fun. And the more comfortable you get with this and the more times you play, the easier all this gets naturally. Number three, continually practice coordination outside of gigs. So this is the, you know, even if you're listening right now, you're a total beginner, you're, you have no plans of playing with people yet, but maybe you want to. Okay, this is a big tip specifically for you right now. Focus a lot on building your coordination. So something else I'll never forget, you know, that first fall of playing in the high school student worship band, there was a song called Sing, Sing, Sing. Uh, not the, uh, the old, um, blanking on his name, the uh, Gene Krupa with Benny Goodman. Not the old Benny Goodman song of Sing, 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 but the Chris Tomlin one. So this is a worship song called Sing, Sing, Sing. The fast four on the floor and the groove was kind of like uh Something kind of like that, like eighth note bass on the toms. Boom, 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 over a, a, a quick four on the floor. Doom, doom, doom. I remember the first time we played that was probably like a month into playing drums with the student band. And I just remember like, oh man, I got to really try to not mess this up. Like it was so out of my comfort zone and so difficult to play. At least that's how I felt. Not, not a complex drum part. It was just hard to play. It's like, I'm trying to think about, all right, I got to keep the four on the floor kick going. Okay. I got to keep the Tom thing going. I got to not mess up. Don't slow down. You know, you're telling yourself all these things. And I remember I probably just had like this constipated face. I was probably angry. It was like, just trying to not screw it up. Then the funny thing was a couple months later, we played that song again, as you know, as we do at church, you know, cycling stuff in and out. And we repeat a lot of the same songs, just like you would on any cover gig. So we played the song again, like probably two or three months later. And that time I sit down and I start playing it. And it's like, whoa, this is effortless. Like what happened? What changed? This is so much easier now. Well, I've been working through realistic rock, working on coordination. I was starting to work on um, Jim Chapin, advanced techniques for the modern drummer. Just a lot of this basic rock and jazz coordination method that uh, maybe some of you are working through, and we've got lessons here on the channel about those. I was practicing that every day. I wasn't practicing Sing, Sing, Sing by Chris Tomlin. I was practicing these coordination things, working on these new grooves, challenging my coordination, and then months later came back to the same song, playing with the same people on Sunday morning, and it was so much easier. And so what you have to be doing outside of your playing songs, you've got to be working the coordination. That's an easy thing to miss. Like, yeah, hand technique is important. That's so critical. If you've got a weak hand, that'll mess you up. If your hands are too stiff and you're not gripping right, that will mess you up. But you've got to be growing your coordination. Otherwise, you're going to be focusing so much on trying to learn each song that it's going to take you forever. 
But if you've got the coordination there, that makes it so much faster to comprehend drum parts and put them together, and song learning becomes much more effortless. Coordination is that hidden superpower, because it's such a mental thing, you're just splitting your brain apart, but it literally is a superpower that will save you so much time and you will grow like crazy. So be working that outside of the gigs. Number four, stay patient, remembering that every gig will get easier. We've been hinting at this one over and over again. And that was always what I had to tell myself starting out, like, this is hard right now. It's gradually getting easier week to week. It's gradually getting less scary. Um, you know, maybe my, my stomach felt a little bit less upset this week than I did last week. I, I remember so many specific times on Sunday mornings, like just kind of having like that anxious, like, oh, my stomach's cramping. Oh, I don't know if I can make it this morning. <laughs> but, but sure enough, I would make it. And as soon as I got done playing, I was fine. Those things become less and less. It only gets easier. The more you do this, the more effortless it becomes. And I say this not at all in an arrogant way, but after you know 15 years of playing in church every Sunday, that's very effortless for me. I can go in there and play, you know, we're, we're still playing a lot of the same songs today that we might have played then. Of course, there's so much new stuff and different songs are more complex than others. And some songs require a lot of focus and are difficult. Others are simple. But that whole setting of playing with a band, especially playing in church, that's my home comfort environment where I've spent so much time playing over the years. It's effortless because... You know, every Sunday, once you do, you know, 50 Sundays a year, 15, however, multiply that out, you know, over a thousand Sundays. And it's not, I don't know if I did that math right, but add in some Wednesday services too. I was playing Sundays and Wednesdays in high school. So you've got all this stuff that compounds over time. Whatever your case is, whatever your scenario is, whether you're playing in a cover band and you're playing every weekend, you're jamming with friends every week, you're playing at church every Sunday morning, that compounds and it adds up. And over time, it's like your skill begins to increase exponentially. So it's not just, okay, 10 gigs gets you to this skill, 20 now gets you twice as far. Sometimes 20 gigs will get you more than twice as far. You just got to keep at it and know that it gets easier. And so now thousands of gigs later, so much of the song learning gig prep process has become way easier for me. And it's because of these things. Okay. One last thing, one last thing, tip number five, that's really important. And that, um, that at first, I don't think I believed, but I came to believe over time and came to notice, and this was something that helped me out a lot. Number five, know that others are on your side cheering you on. In other words, nobody wants you to fail. <laughs> um, you know, nobody wants you to train wreck the band. Nobody wants you to completely mess up. They're the, completely mess up. They're rooting for you. It's often your own ego you have to get over that's telling you, everyone's watching me and everyone's waiting for me to mess up. But deep down, everybody wants you to succeed. And that was what I began to notice. Like, I think my fear as a high school kid was always that I was going to mess up and everybody was going to laugh. The thing is, um, that did happen, by the way. There were definitely mistakes where I messed up and it was obvious and people laughed. But the thing is, you know, those, these things are funny. You kind of have to laugh at yourself and you have to be okay with that and not take yourself too seriously. And if we go even deeper with this, it comes down to knowing that your worth and your identity is not in that gig and how well you play that morning. What happened with me was I was definitely putting way too much emotional stock in, all right, how well am I going to play today? And if it didn't go well, I was really hard on myself. And that was something that I had to learn to let go of. And that took a lot of time. And so you've got to be secure in your identity, not being based off of how well you're playing right now. There's a lot more to you and a lot more value, intrinsic value you have totally outside of the drums. And so you have to know that and be secure with that foundation so that you're not having to worry about this. But besides all of that, the internal work that many of us need to do, know that other people are on your side and they want you to succeed. And so what began to happen in the high school student band for me was that it was obvious that my fellow bandmates were cheering me on. They were so encouraging and that encouragement was critical. You know, they were telling me that I did a great job even when I probably didn't. They were telling me I was awesome even when I wasn't. And so that really meant the world because I, I don't think anybody can succeed at something without at least somebody encouraging them. Every great story has a guide. You know, Frodo wouldn't have made it to Mordor without Gandalf. Uh, Luke Skywalker would not have defeated the Empire without Obi-Wan. And so everybody has their guide. You got to have somebody who's encouraging you and helping you out. And if it's your bandmates, that's even better because those are the people whose opinions you're really going to value and that really hold a lot of weight. And so that was tremendous for me. We had this encouraging environment where we were helping each other play well and we were excited about the music we played. And so know that you're not alone and that other people are on your side cheering you on. And even if they're not, and even if it feels like they're not, 
you have to not put all of your identity in you as a drummer because you will fail. You will fail yourself, and that's going to be really hard if you've decided that I am a failure because I messed up. Don't go there. Don't let yourself go there. All right. I want to leave you with a couple thoughts here. One is that your first, if you have not played a gig yet, your first gig will be way out of your comfort zone. I'm not going to lie, and I'm not going to tell you that by doing all of this, your first gig will be a walk in the park. It might be. That'd be great. But odds are it's going to be difficult. But if you follow today's tips, that's going to at least help you feel like you're doing your very best. Uh, you'll feel more confident before the gig because you'll know how to prepare. You'll feel more confident during the gig because you'll know what to do and what to pay attention to and what to listen for. And you'll feel more confident afterwards in how things went, knowing that you did your best and you've got a healthy mindset moving forward, knowing, hey, I'm going to keep practicing. I'm going to keep working at this because I know it's going to get easier. So question for you before you go, have you played your first gig yet? If so, how did it go? Let us know because I know there are some beginners out there who have played a first gig and maybe maybe it didn't go great. And so sharing that with everybody can uh, could be very helpful. Maybe it did go great. Maybe you're surprised by how well it went, which could also be encouraging knowing that, hey, we've all been there at some point. We have all played a first gig. Just think about that. You know, the best drummers in the world, at some point they played their first gig. Everybody's been there. And so at some point you got to do it, even if it terrifies you. But I believe in you. I believe you can do it. Sometimes the key to doing something is just making yourself do it. Uh, do it scared, as a lot of people like to say. Do it scared, and uh, gradually the fear is going to go away. Sometimes you just got to do it. All right. Thanks so much for hanging out today. Be sure to go grab that weak hand test. Work through that. If you're dealing with a weak hand, if your hands are not perfectly even, you need to go through this. It's going to help expose exactly what specific little thing you need to work on so you can solve it quickly for fast fluid fills around the kit. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. I hope it's been valuable to you. As always, know that you can do this. Stay non-glamorous. I'll see you on the next lesson.